Jai Gurudev, Jai Masters. Like everything else in this world, love is completely misunderstood. There are many different levels and people think they understand what they don't understand at all. Love belongs to someone who has finally understood what's going on. The way we see love, we humans, at the different levels that we are, the way we see it is as follows. I'm not okay. You make me okay. Come here. All right? It's just sort of like... I'm not okay. Come on. I'm not okay. What does that mean? I don't feel what I want to feel. I don't feel inspired. I don't feel high. I don't feel love. I don't feel passion. I don't feel open. I don't feel okay. And I want to. But yeah, that's perfectly reasonable. Somehow, when I'm around you, I'm doing better. Anywhere from I feel somewhat inspired, I feel somewhat uplifted, to I feel, I feel love. What do you mean when you say, I've, what's the difference between feeling inspired, uplifted, and feeling love? Inspiration can come in many different forms. My mind quiets down. I, I want to do things. I want to go places. And I, I feel my energy, my juice, my mojo's flowing. Okay? Love means this thing over here in the middle of your chest, this heart, it's activated. It feels stuff. It's, it's like a little kid. It's bubbly. And, and sometimes you actually feel a connection out of your heart with another person, place, or thing. It doesn't have to be a person. You feel it for a dog. You feel it for a horse. You feel it for a car. If your heart opens, you feel activation. You feel energy. Let's just call it. You feel energy come out of your heart. You gave a name to that energy. Love. That's different than inspiration. That's different than passion. That there's other types of energy that you like just as much. But love is very particular. It comes through the heart and the heart opens and you feel this energy come out of the heart. To me, I, I love, it's rare, but people do have it, that two people can just be sitting together, not hugging, just sitting distant from each other, close distance, and they can't talk. There's just this juice flowing out of them both, connecting in between, and you feel their heart and they feel your heart and you're in love. Okay? You're in love. Fine. What we do with that, because we don't understand what it is. We, we understand what it feels like and we like it. That's the basics of how much we know about love. I like it. It comes out of my heart and it happens when you're around. So guess what? You're in big trouble. So am I. But you're in big trouble. Why? Because I like it. That's no different than I like your car. Give it to me. I like it. It makes me happy to be around it. You make me happy to be around you. Be around me. Where are you? I tried to call you. It creates a possessiveness. It creates all of that energy that you all give a real nice name to. We're in a relationship. I'll bet you are. That's your relationship. You turn me on. Get over here. Behave yourself. Stop talking to him. I liked you better when you wore that blouse. I like when your hair's like this. In other words, what you are, and that's, it's male, female, goes both ways. <laughs> okay, and it's not sexist. What it basically says is, you have the ability to help me feel love. Get to work. There are ways you need to be so that I feel what I want to feel. Doesn't that sound terrible, but isn't it true? You know how you know it's true? When it stops happening, when you stop feeling love and energy in the presence of that person, you say things like, you know, it, I just don't feel it anymore. You know, it's time to move on. Why is it time to move on? Because the whole reason I was there with you is it made this thing happen. I don't know why, but it did. And now it's not. For the kids, you stay together. Sober topic, isn't it? That's why everybody goes from relationship to relationship and changes, tries this and try, And then you try all kinds of things. <laughs> right? Nowadays, you try all kinds of things just to see what, what you can do because you don't understand love. You understand what is happening, but you don't understand the dynamics of what is going on. So you only know this thing causes me to feel it, helps me feel it, whatever you want to say. Therefore, I'm going to do everything I can to manipulate and control that person so that they be the way I need them to be so that I can keep feeling this. It's as simple as that, okay? And when I stop, then, then, then it's pretty much over. That's not 
really love. That is the energy coming up, but it's mixed with need. It creates need, and it's mixed with need. Somebody once said, a very high being once said, love can either be the biggest trap there is or the greatest liberator. It depends on if you have liberated, freed the love from your personal self. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. So what is love? Love has nothing to do with another person. You've seen that. All of a sudden they show up, you feel love. They show up, they don't feel love. It, it can just comes, it goes. It, you know, it's, something going on here. All right, you all say, we have chemistry together. Eh, it's not exactly chemistry, it's more physics, as you'll see. What it boils down to is as follows. You have energy inside of you. You know you do. Sometimes you feel enthused. Sometimes you feel depressed and tired. What is the difference? Your energy level. You say that, it turned me on. What are you, a radio? I get high. What is it? All these terms you use. There is energy inside. It can be up and high and open and flowing, or it can be down and closed and not flowing. It can be light inside. It can be dark inside. People don't understand why. That's the problem. Therefore, what they do is chase after things, what's called indirection. They chase after something that indirectly makes them feel better inside. Instead of understanding why do you feel energy sometimes, why do you not feel it other times, what is the energy anyways, what's going on in there? So it's not like hit and miss that you need somebody else or something else to make you be open or make you be excited. Some people have to go on vacations all the time and travel to different places and you know, in order to get their juices flowing. Is there something wrong with that? There's not a single thing I'm going to talk about tonight that has anything to do with right or wrong. It has to do, do you understand what's going on? Because if you don't understand what's going on, you're going to be chasing things indirectly that you hope will make you feel higher and open inside. And you'll be running away from things that you think will close you. So what is going on? What's going on is very foundational. You have energy inside of you there. You know that. (laughs) You may not call it energy, but you do. You have energy inside of you. That energy can be flowing or it cannot be flowing. It can be open, feeding you, or it can be drawing you down into a dark, dark place. All the whole spectrum, relatively up and relatively down. All right? Why? I've discussed this with you tons of times. We're going to go very deep tonight, so let's go real quick. Why is the energy there sometimes and the energy is not there other times? Someday you will find out the energy is always there. It is always there. The question is, can you experience it? The reason you can't experience it most of the time, you don't experience very high energy most of the time, the reason you can't experience it most of the time is because you have blocked the flow of the energy. I've discussed this with you. We're going to go to the beginning, then we'll go much deeper. You block the flow of the energy. How? If you're going to take every experience that ever bothered you and store it inside of you, you're going to have blocked energy. If your mother said something to you that bothered you and was really nice to your sister, right? And so you grew up with all this jealousy and insecurity and different things like that. That was when you were five and six and seven and eight and nine and whatever it was. And at some point you went to college and you went away and you got married. Why is that stuff still in there? That's the question I beg you if you walk away from my talks at once in your life. Question, why would it be in there? It's not happening anymore. But it is in there, isn't it? Okay? It's in there. You stored it inside of you. You stored the pain. You stored the insecurity. You stored the disturbance that you felt when you were young, years ago. You have it inside, and it doesn't take much for it to come back up. It doesn't take much. To you. In fact, go visit your parents. It'll come back up. You get a letter from mom, right? The first feeling you get is, if that's how you grew up. And if it was the opposite, then you feel the opposite. What's making the difference? It's not you. You're not making that conscious difference. It is because you have stored stuff inside of you from your past. And that stuff stands between you and your energy flow. It's like a veil. It's like the blinds. If I put the blinds down, the sun doesn't come in. The sun's always there. I put the blinds down. If I bring the blinds up, oh, look, there's sun. If I put them down, oh, the sun went away. No, it did not. You are the one that is that are putting obstacles in the way of your consciousness, you, ability to experience the energy that is always there. That is the foundation of life. You have to understand that or you will make terrible decisions throughout your entire life. 
You'll just be lost running around trying to find things that make you happy, trying to avoid things that make you sad. And you won't get anywhere. It's like a hamster running on that wheel. You're not going to get anywhere. There's no relationship you're going to find that's going to put it to sleep. There's no money you're ever going to earn that's going to take care of it. There's no good looking that you're going to figure yourself out for a few years. That's all it's going to last. That's going to make it happen. There isn't. Why? Because you're not dealing with the problem. Well, why is it that if I meet somebody, the relationship can seem to do it? Because the newness of it, the energy of the person, the excitement of starting a relationship distracts you from yourself. Now you're not thinking about mommy. Now you're not thinking about your ex-husband. You know, you're thinking about this other person. Because your consciousness and your mind has transferred its attention, its focus onto something other than yourself, I'm not denying that that the honeymoon stage of a relationship is very beautiful. Why do they call it the honeymoon stage? Because it doesn't last. Not like that. I'm not saying the relationship can't last. But some people used to say, oh, that's puppy love. No, it's not. It's love. (laughs) Okay? And it should be there all the time. And it can be there all the time. Don't tell me, no, our relationship is mature. We're friends. Uh, Very nice that you're friends. But that energy should be there and can be there all the time. And people don't understand that. So what's happening is if the relationship or the new car or the vacation, whatever it is, right, or the raise, distracts you from your stuff, then you feel more open. You feel more energy. You're tuning into the energy. The stuff will come back. Why? You did nothing to get rid of it. You did nothing to change your relationship with your mother. It's just that now since you met Fred, you can handle your mother. Why? Because you're not being pulled back into that it's called some scar, that pattern that you have inside. This thing has distracted you enough. You can go to a movie and all of a sudden feel real good when you come out. You didn't feel good going in. Why? It distracted you from yourself. And because it took your consciousness off of this mess that you created inside by storing a mess inside, then your energy is free to flow. You, you tuned into a deeper level and, and you can feel all kinds of nice energy with a book or a movie or any kind of, That's why we call it entertainment. We should call it distraction. Right. If you go to a movie and it doesn't catch your attention, it doesn't distract you from yourself, you say it was boring. It wasn't entertaining at all. I didn't like it at all. It's the same thing with a relationship, just like a movie. It's the same thing with a job. At first you get a job. Oh my God, you're giving me everything I love to do. I feel so challenged. This is so neat. And I love the people I'm working with, right? Then they hire somebody else or then the boss quits or this happens or that. Or you don't get exactly the task that you like to have. How much do you like your job? I used to. And what they teach you is find your passion. I won't teach you that. Why? I will teach you that if you're open, everything gives you passion. Now have fun. Love your job. Love your relationship. Love your not relationship. Love looking for a job. Love your old car. Love your new car. I want you to have fun. I don't want it to be conditional upon other people, places, or things. Because that doesn't work out too good, does it? Because the truth is, it's not conditional upon other people, places, and things. The reason that some things turn you on is because of you. The same thing that turns you on turns him off. So basically, you just get to the point where you understand the basics The basics, the foundation, you should always know this. There is energy inside of me, tremendous energy. I have felt it. I have felt high. I have felt wonderful. I felt love. I felt passion. I felt inspired. The reason I don't feel it all the time is not because it's not there and not because there's some magic to it. It's because I have shoved stuff on top of it that makes it so that, look, when it gets cloudy out, you don't see the sun. I guarantee you the sun's still there. If you shove all this junk down on top of your energy flow, and I made it very clear to you what the junk is, situations that have happened in your past that you did not feel comfortable with, you didn't like it, so you pushed it away. You do it all the time. You're sitting inside. It starts to feel yucky. What do you do? You push it away. You don't want to feel that. That act, that very instinctual act of pushing it away is what blocks your energy flow. And even the slightest, right? Somebody comes by and doesn't say hello to you when they're walking by. You feel a little weird. You know, you said hello, they didn't say hello, you feel a little weird. What do you do with that? Welcome the feeling of weirdness? No one, <laughs> unless you've practiced a long time, not one of you do that. That is not your natural instinctual thing to do. It is the same as if somebody takes a swing at you. I don't care if you're trained in martial arts or not, your arm is going up is an instinctual reaction of protection. That is what you're doing inside. That thing took a swing at you. It felt yicky. It felt rejected. You felt uncomfortable. 
All right? This stuff happens. It causes a reaction inside. And I'm telling you, your instinctual reaction is to protect yourself from it, which may sound perfectly reasonable. The trouble is, if I push it away, it can't finish. It can't, the energy can't release. I, years ago, I saw it as, let's say you were afraid of dogs. And your neighbor had dogs, some you know, big ones, a couple of dogs. They, they're not biting dogs, but they're big dogs. And you're afraid of dogs. And all of a sudden, your neighbor's calling the dogs home for dinner. And unfortunately, you stand in between the house, his house, and the dogs. And so the dogs come running, right? What do you do? Well, if you're really afraid of the dogs, that's not tolerable to let them run past you. Because in order to run past you, they have to run at you. You have to experience what it's like to have these dogs come closer and come up. If you're really afraid of dogs, you don't want to do that. You're not going to do that. You're going to pick up a stick and throw it at the dog. You're going to yell at the dog. You're going to do something to shoo it away. Shoo, shoo, go away. Well, let's say you succeed. Let's say that dog shoos away. It doesn't, doesn't want to you know, be uncomfortable with it, right? Well, it's going to keep wanting to go home, and you don't want it to go past you. Not, it never gets better. So all of a sudden, the purpose of your life is to keep the dogs at bay. You can't go home either. We can't be better. Where, where's your spouse? Where's your kids? Where, you can't do anything. You're caught in a situation where the energy that's coming at you is trying to finish by passing through you, passing by you. You can't let it or you won't let it because it creates discomfort inside of you. So now you took on a task of keeping it at bay. You don't want to do that. <laughs> it's like you, what you want to do, and that's what I teach you with this relaxation techniques, right, is you want to be able to tolerate the discomfort that is felt inside of you because these dogs are coming closer. Why? Because if you can tolerate it, they'll run by you, and it's over. You want it to be over, don't you? You don't want to sit there and keep having to keep these dogs at that bay, and man, you run out of sticks. So it is the same thing inside. If something happens that causes even the slightest, I mean the slightest disturbance inside, you don't want to feel that. So you do the same thing as keeping the dogs at bay. You push it away. You have will inside. You have hands inside. You can manipulate things inside. The only way it's actually going away is when you let it pass. Anything you do to mess with it. I don't care if you throw the sticks this way at the dogs or that way. You're not going to be finished. It's going to be there forever. Psychology will tell you that. Stuff that happened to you in your formative years, that's why they call it your formative years, are still there. They form the foundation of your blockages. It's sad. Well, what should have happened? What should have happened is the world came in and passed through. If it is over outside, it is over inside. That's a very good motto for a person who wants to grow and live a full life. If it is not happening outside anymore, why am I being bothered by it? I won. It's not happening. I had an ex-husband. He was a real schnook. Sorry, made a, made a mistake. Okay, we all make some, all right? And I got divorced six years ago. Why am I still having the discussions when I get into a shower of the arguments that took place six years ago during the divorce? Why? He, I thought I got divorced. You didn't get divorced. He's not there anymore, but you didn't get divorced. It's still going on inside. Why? When I meet somebody and I like them a little bit, then they say something, they sit a certain way, they look a certain way, they wear a certain bow tie or clothes, and it reminds me of my ex, and that's the end of that relationship. All it has to do is remind you of your ex. It's over. In other words, your ex is still running your life, even though he or she is not there. It's not reasonable. The problem is we were never taught how to not do that. We are not taught how to let that stuff go. We are taught the opposite. We're taught to get even. So the basic foundation that we're forming, and by the way, the subject tonight is love. Because if you don't understand this, you will not understand real love. You will not understand what love is. So you have energy flowing inside of you. It is blocked because you blocked it. Because you did it, that empowers you to undo it. If somebody else did it, you know, your ex from six years ago, well, you're stuck with it. But you did it. Your ex may have been a schnook, but you're the one that didn't let it go. And when it's all said and done, if it is not happening outside, but it's happening inside, you own it. 
There is no super glue in there. There is no law that says that stuff has to stay in some period of time. It is a question of whether you are in there using your will to keep it at bay so that you don't have to experience the discomfort that it was. Okay? So now, if you build this stuff inside, and you have, over time it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, and this is a very deep, I don't usually talk about this level, let's say you have something in there I guess I said it. If you have something in there from before, now something happens that would have been natural, wouldn't have been a problem. It's not a problem in and of itself. It, it's your birthday, and it looks like it's going to rain. Okay, I mean, lots of us have birthdays, and it rains a lot of days. But when you were six, you had a birthday party outside, and it poured, and it was a terrible situation, and you cried your eyes out, and all your friends left. Now you're 36. And when it's your birthday, if it gets cloudy, you get sad. Whoa. So something that was neutral that happened became negative because you stored negative from before inside of you. Now, go extrapolate that out. Get your combinations and permutations of how messy everything can get if you're storing all this stuff inside of you. And now regular life is unfolding, but it's hitting your stuff. So it became negative. That's why it's so sensitive inside. That's why there's so many things that bother you so much. So the net result is you end up with this whole blockage inside. It is your personality. It's how you think. It's what you feel. It's what you like. It's what you don't like. It's why everything about you is the way it is, except for one part. You, the consciousness inside, that's watching all this and, in fact, doing it. You're the one who's resisting and using your will to create a mess inside. All right. Now, what's it got to do with love? Love is when the energy is open enough to make it to what we call in the trade the fourth chakra. It is an energy center in your heart. When the energy opens up enough and it makes it through your heart, that's what you're experiencing is love. Love is Shakti, Chi, Spirit, call whatever you want, your energy flow, making it up past your lower centers and making it out through the heart. It doesn't usually do that. Why? Because you have all this junk inside. When does it do it? When the situation outside doesn't threaten your likes and dislikes and patterns and, and somehow it fits exactly somebody's wearing the you know, somehow the, you love people with bow ties, you never told anybody because it's weird, right? And it's actually polka dot bow ties with striped shirts because Willy Wonka wore one one. Who the heck knows, right? You got some stupid stuff going on in there and you go on a blind date and somebody shows up dressed like that. All of a sudden, you're open. When something matches the junk that you stored inside in a positive way, not a negative way, if it matches good experience that you've had, which you stored inside also, why do you store good experiences? Because you don't want to let them go. You store bad experiences because you don't want to experience them. You store good experiences because you don't want them to be over. It's called, Buddhists call it clinging. So you hold on that, oh, I had this wonderful moment. Can we redo it? And I think about it all the time. Well, if you're thinking about the moment you had a while ago that was so wonderful, you're not living the life you're having today. There won't be more moments. Why? You won't let them. You're busy trying to recreate the moment you had before. These are in the trade. These are called negative and positive some scars. Patterns that you've stored inside that are screwing up your life. Because you can't experience the reality that's unfolding in front of you. You're busy trying to make it not match your past stuff and make it match that stuff. So you're constantly out there struggling with life, manipulating, controlling. That's not love. If you succeed in getting someone or a situation to be a way that matches your stuff, that is not going to last. You've what done is manipulated a person to treat you the way you need to be treated so you feel okay. Come on, how yicky is that? All right? And if the person says, I love you, you know they're lying. Why? You manipulated them to behave in a way that you like. And they're saying they like that. You understand? It's like it's not even real. Real love is spontaneous. Is no one's controlling or manipulating anything. Can you imagine such a thing? Can you imagine what it would be like that if somebody loved you, loved you with all your things and you didn't have to do anything about it and there's nothing you could do about it that could make them stop? You can't blow it? Oh, my God, most people will never experience that. They've never experienced anything like that. They're busy trying to please the other person to be the way the other person wants them to be so that they can feel loved, so they can feel accepted. Well, then they don't love you. They love the act you're putting on. Some people are actually cautious about everything they say. 
even around people that they love, relationships. They have to watch what they say, right? Be careful not to say anything wrong. Be careful not to say anything that offends anybody. And, and you can't love. That's not love. What it basically means is I'm trying to control the situations so that they leave me alone, so that I'm okay. Well, okay is not love. Okay is just your ego appeasing itself. And those are your relationships. So love is when that's not going on, which is very rare. And the energy spontaneously comes up inside. There's nothing you can do about it. And it connects. It connects, right? And you don't have to worry about anything. Like I said, I would love that you could have such a relationship. Very few people have ever been able to be in situations like that. But it can happen, and you can do it. So when the love comes up, it will go out. Now the question becomes, how long will that last? Notice when I say when it will go out. When the things match your patterns, that's why only certain people turn you on. Somebody has to look just right. They have to dress just right. They have to talk just right. They have to act just right. And if you find out that their past had something in it that you would not have thought it was, you don't love them anymore. How hard is it that you get a crush on somebody, you're in love with somebody, and one of your friends comes up and tells you something about them that you didn't know? And that's the end of that, even if it happened years ago. It's because the energy will not go up to the fourth chakra until it makes it past the third. And the third chakra is this whole judgmental social interaction, you know, your self-concept, all that kind of stuff, what you like, what you don't like, and so on. So unless something fits just right, it's not going to go up. If it does, it's going to go up. Both are dangerous. It's dangerous if it doesn't go up because then you don't get to have a full life. It's dangerous if it does go up because it's what we call conditional love. That's conditional love. You will only feel the energy going up there if everything's just right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Just exactly right. Well, it doesn't happen that often, does it? And it doesn't stay that long. So basically, you come to the point of understanding that in order to feel love, you have to let go of yourself. And that's what they teach you. They teach you that love is supposed to be selfless. Love is unconditional Love has no rules. It has no anything. It, it's just basically, I have no choice but to let this take place inside of me. It is the meaning of my life. This is what I live for. It's why I breathe. Not you. You're not what I live for. This is what I live for. Javran, when they asked about love, he said, love loves not but itself. Love gives not but to itself. And love takes not but from itself. For love is sufficient unto love. Love is an experience inside of you that is really beautiful, isn't it? Worship it. Devote yourself to it. I didn't say devote yourself to somebody else. We'll see how that fits. Because I'm telling you, it gets fickle when you start doing that. I'll devote myself to you as long as you do this, this, and this. And then when you stop doing this and this, you're like, <laughs> what are you crazy? I'm not nuts. I'm going to protect myself from you. It still has the conditions of what we call the ego, of the third chakra. Love basically says as follows. You want to, I'm going to teach you how to have love and keep it all the time. Love says, I like this. I like what? I like this feeling in my heart. <laughs> Don't you? I like it. It's really nice. Woo! It really lifts me. It's uplifting and it's inspiring. And I love going to work if I know I can come home. And I just, I just love love. I love love. Love indeed is sufficient unto love. That's it. I don't want to ask you this because you may have somebody significant next to you, but truthfully, if you were given a choice, okay, you can have that person, but no love, or you can have love, but not that person, which one you taking? It's like, wake up. You love the energy. Love loves love. The soul loves love. It's a beautiful, uplifting, bathing energy. It bathes it with beauty. Understand that and start to understand what you need to do in order to have that going on inside of you all the time, unconditionally, of what's going on outside. Can you do such a thing? Yes, absolutely. Your love is not dependent upon anything or anyone else. It is something that goes on inside of you. You make it dependent by saying, as long as you talk to me this way, I'll love you. If you then somehow do something different, then I don't love you. You know, if you decide to go back to school, and therefore you're not home as much as i like you to be home, well, what am I in this for? This is not going to work out for me. It has to be, I'm about love itself. And I love having you around. And you're a wonderful opportunity for me to practice being open and practice loving. But my work is on myself. It's not selfish. It's literally selfless. My work is on myself. I need to learn to be open regardless of what takes place. I don't want my love to be conditional. 
Can you do that? Yes. Now can you do it? No. Just like you can't play tennis the first time you pick up a rocket. You can play the piano the first time you sit down. You weren't able to do the calculus the first time you walked in that class, did you? Right? You had no idea. You did this thing called learning. Spirituality is about learning. But it's learning great things. It's learning to say, I like love. So basically, love is your energy making it through the fourth chakra. Love is your energy making it through the heart chakra, through the heart center. Why doesn't it? Because you've blocked it with all your ego stuff, with all your likes and dislikes and preferences and concepts and views. Just your whole personality, your whole self-concept, the whole thing you built about yourself is blocking your energy flow. And you only feel it when things match you and it goes down when things don't match you. You need to break that habit. That's what it means to work on love. You want to work on a relationship? I've taught this many times. You know what the most important relationship you'll ever have in your life is? The one with yourself. How about we do some work in there? That's what the spiritual path is. Inner work. You've heard that word? Doing the inner work. It doesn't mean meditation. There's nothing wrong with meditation. It's wonderful. It's a good way to do inner work. It doesn't mean mantra. It doesn't mean gurus. It doesn't mean any of that stuff. It means you're in there realizing, I want to feel love. Yeah, that's okay. I'm talking about God. I want to feel love. You all want to feel love. All right? Love is energy making it through the heart. Why is mine not making it through it all the time? Because you're blocked. Well, then how do I do it? You release your blockages. You work your way through your blockages. As you work your way through your blockages, you will feel more energy come up. You will feel more love. You'll, a bird will sing. All of a sudden, you'll be blown away by love pouring through your heart. Oh, there were always birds singing, right? Like basically because you were closed. You were busy trying to get things the way you think they needed to be for you to feel love. Can I repeat that to you? You're busy every moment with everything you do, trying to get things a certain way so that you can feel the energy come up. A yogi, a spiritual person, a lover, a true lover, doesn't do that. The lover says, I am the cause of my not feeling love. Therefore, I am the solution to feeling love. And what I'm going to do is release the blockages that I've stored up inside of me so that my energy and flow can naturally and unconditionally come up inside. And then I'm never going to let it go down. So there's two stages of that. One is how do I release the blockages? And two, if it starts flowing, how do I never have it go down? How do I work with that? Well, you release the blockages by releasing the blockages. If when energy comes up inside that's yicky, because you have stuff inside that makes the energy yicky, instead of fighting it, resisting it, pushing it away, rationalizing it, or judging yourself or feeling guilty because it's there, you don't do any of that about it. That's just buying into the game. And you start becoming a wise person. You're in there and you remember the purpose of your life. Purpose of your life is love. Purpose of your life is to bring this energy up and have it never go back down. All right? Now I'm going to tell you right now, just in case this interests you, that's the fourth chakra. There are seven of them. And the difference, it's all logarithmic. The difference between your third chakra, the junk of what I want in manipulating people, and the fourth, that's a big difference. That's nowhere as close Till you go from fourth to fifth to sixth to seventh. Each of those is way more distance than third to fourth. We had a nice journey in front of us. You hear me? But you, don't worry about that stuff. If you can't work with love, if you can't work with what I'm talking about, you can't work with the higher centers because you can't work with the lower ones. So basically, you commit yourself to saying this. It's so simple. It's not simple to do, but it's simple to understand. There are going to be situations that unfold in the world around me every single moment of every day, <laughs> not once in a while, but one of the big ones. There are going to be things that unfold in front of me that hit my stuff. Have you noticed? It doesn't take much. You can't even handle the driver in front of you that's not driving the way you want to drive. They're going too slow. They're going too fast. It's just, it just starts getting weird in there, okay? Unless it matches what you want, it gets weird. Good. That's how you change your life. You sit there and say, okay. If I'm trying to stop smoking, I'm going to feel the urge to smoke. That's a very intelligent starting place. If you sit there and say, I've decided to stop smoking, therefore I won't feel the urge anymore, you will never stop smoking because you're going to feel the urge because it's a habit. It's something that you built inside yourself and you need to get over it for it to go away. Okay? It is the same thing with this. If things are happening outside and they're causing you to feel weird inside, I would love you to join me because my attitude is that's my problem, not the outside's problem. There's no way that anything outside of me should be causing disturbance inside of me. I committed my life to feeling love. Why would I let the driver in front of me, I don't even know them, take my love away? 
Why would I let the fact that it's going to rain tomorrow take my love away? Why would I let the fact that you're not wearing what I thought you were going to wear when we're going to see my parents take my love away? Why am I letting all these things take my love away? I didn't say the meaning of my life was that it don't rain. The meaning of my life is you wear what I want you to wear. I said the meaning of my life is I want to feel love. I want to feel love all the time. I feel inspired all the time. I want to feel turned on, passionate. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Then why are you giving it up to these meaningless things? That's when you start to work on yourself. It has to do with I want to feel love. You understand? When you say, I want to meet somebody, you're saying, I want to feel love, <laughs> all right? When you're saying, I want to get a raise and feel good about myself and feel that I, I got the corner office, you're saying, I want to feel inspired. I want to feel love. I want to feel high. If everybody that ever got the corner office within three months doesn't work there anymore, you don't want the corner office. It has nothing to do with the corner office. It has nothing to do with the other person. It has nothing to do with your job. It has to do with, do I feel this inspiration? Do I feel this love? Am I turned on? Is this the best day of my life? Because this stuff's flowing inside of me. And you commit yourself to that. That's the paradigm shift on the spiritual path. That's what I've committed myself to. Now, why don't I feel it? Because I blocked it. Come on, you know you blocked it. Somebody did something. Even your child, your son, there's there's people that their child did something they didn't like. They never talked to him again. There are people in the same family that don't talk to each other anymore. Really, I'm telling you the truth. (laughs) Okay, it's just hilarious, right? What are you doing? What you've done is said, what that other person did is worth my closing my heart. And let's get something straight. You close your heart, it's not to one person and not another. It's like the faucet, right? You close the faucet, no water comes out. Okay? No, I'm just closing it so Sally doesn't get any water. Well, then neither does anybody else, (laughs) including you, all right? it's, It's like that. So you you commit yourself to saying, I want to feel love. I want this energy coming up into my heart chakra. And I want to feel that all the time, whether somebody's with me or not with me, I don't care. I want to feel it. But then what you're going to see is that when something happens that disturbs your ego, that disturbs your self-concept, you don't feel love. You tend to close. Have you ever felt closing? Come on, let's be honest for a second. Anybody ever did anything and you just closed down? You know what that's saying? I don't want to feel love. That's just saying, I don't want to feel love. (laughs) It's just the funniest thing. If you close it, it's closed. So you basically say to yourself, all right, the meaning of my life is not to find people, places, and things that will tend to open me. It is to let go of the reason I'm closed. So you sit in there and you start this process. If something happens outside and it causes a disturbance in the force, we're playing Star Wars here, causes a disturbance in the force, I'm going to learn not to protect myself from that. I'm going to learn to use that as an opportunity to say, that's been in there for a long time. It now got stimulated. I guess it's time for me to wake up, grow up, and let it go. And that's how your attitude is about every moment of your life. This topic tonight is love. It doesn't sound like I'm talking about love. That's tough stuff. That's right. Okay? You have to be willing. Christ said it. You have to die to be reborn. You have to be willing to let go of the part of you that's blocking you in order to not be blocked. If you're serious about it and you want to stop doing it, then stop doing it. If you want your heart to be open and you want to feel love, and that's how you want to exist with yourself, then do that. Sit there and say, when I'm feeling discomfort, I need to find how to not protect myself from it. I need to find how to let it go. Start with the simple stuff. Start with the little stuff. Start with the fact that the weather bothers you. Start with the fact that the car in front of you isn't the way you want it, driving the way you want. Start with the fact that somebody didn't say hello to you. These tiny little things that are so meaningless, it's ridiculous. How could you let yourself... Here, let's stand at the corner, and every time you give me $100, I'll give you a quarter. I'll do it anytime you want, okay? Every time you give me right, you are sitting there saying, it's going to rain tomorrow, I'm going to give up love. The person in front of me is driving 10 miles an hour below the speed limit in a rush. I'm going to give up love. I called out to Sally. Either she didn't hear me or she doesn't like me anymore. She didn't answer. I'm going to give up love. You're making a trade that's ridiculous. These are meaningless things. Start treating them that way. How? Work with yourself. I, I, I don't even want to give you techniques. Like I was amazed a drug addict manages to get drugs. They have no money. They, they figure it out, don't they? It's amazing how ingenuous they are. You want your heart open? You want to feel love? Figure it out. Now, there are traditional techniques that people have passed. 
Yogananda used to teach every time you have a negative thought, replace it with a positive one. So if you're sitting there driving behind somebody, you were feeling love, you're happy, right, was going, and then somebody driving in front of you slower than you want to, that's the end of the happiness, isn't it? Come on. Just like that, it goes away. But it doesn't go away, you give it away by not dealing with what came up. What came up is your ego. Why do you have to drive later? What's wrong with you? It's in the left lane, the right lane. And so you replace it with a nicer thought. You say nicer things. I also taught you, you can do mantra. That's the purpose of mantra. You learn to have something going on inside your head all the time, a habit, as you form that habit inside your head, like, like the song that won't stop singing, right? Get it doing that. And now when the person is driving slow in front of you and you remember that your life is about love, not about the person driving in front of you, and you decide, I'm about love. Therefore, instead of hanging out with the part of me that's being a poo-poo head, I'm just going to do the mantra. This works. It works. It can't not work. Why? Because you're not buying into protecting yourself from yourself. And ultimately, and that's what all for now and all we're going to talk about is that, is you're so conscious and you're so committed to your growth. So you commit yourself to the path that we're talking about. I am going to make my life, every moment of it, be about letting go of anything inside of me that is interfering with my ability to feel this beautiful energy that's coming up inside. If you are fortunate enough to actually be feeling love, maybe you're in a relationship, maybe something happened, whatever it is, and you're just on a high, right? That's a wonderful time to practice this. You just sit there and say, nothing's going to take me down. Nothing. I'm going to let go. I'm going to use this to let go of the part of me that had trouble at work, that did this, that didn't like what my mother friend did. No, I'm committing myself to use this relationship to let go of myself. I'm not expecting the other person to be the way that keeps me open. I'm expecting myself to commit myself and say, if I'm open now, I'm going to let go of anything that would close me either what that person does or what anybody else does during the day at work or anything like that. I'm going to make love the purpose and meaning of my life. It's my intent. My intent is to feel love all the time. My intent is to feel inspiration all the time. So when this stuff comes up, the highest technique I can teach you is you don't get involved in it. The stuff is going to come up for a while. Get used to it. You can put a lot down there. You understand that? You've been doing it your whole life. And so basically... You learn this practice of if it starts to come up, if the dogs start to run toward me and I start to feel fear, my choice is deal with the fear or always deal with the dogs. One will be over shortly. The other will never be over. And so you learn this fear is not comfortable, but I can handle it. How? You relax and give it the room to pass. It is just stuff coming up. And so you relax through it. But when I was little, I got bit by a dog. Fine. Right? Not every dog bites. You're not little anymore. You don't let that run your life. And so you basically learn to let go. It's called letting go. You just relax in the face of the negative energy that's coming up. And next step, once you're able to do that, is lean away from it. There's a place it's coming up from. I don't know how to describe this to you. But if I asked you, where do you feel love? None of you put your hand on the top of your head or on your foot. There's a place these things are happening. There's a place you're experiencing these things. So when the negative energy comes up, when the disturbances come up, or strong desires, it doesn't matter, either one, when they come up, they're somewheres. You're actually experiencing them. You're seeing them. When you relax, lean away from the place you see them from. Now, you will not be able to do that to start with. That's why you meditate. That's why you do mantra. You build a center that's strong enough so that when something comes up that would have pulled you out of your center, so you, you know, kind of like you lose yourself. Hey, we use the term, he lost it. I love that term. Lost what? What do you mean when you say he lost it? He lost his center. He was here paying attention to what was going on, feeling what he was feeling, noticing that something was disturbing him, and then all of a sudden, he's not there anymore. He became anger. He became need. He became jealousy. And that's what poured out of his mouth. Do you understand that? You fell into the energy. Fell from where? From a seat of centered consciousness that was aware of the energy. So meditation, mantra, these practices, the sit-down practices, you know, on the cushion, on the mat type practices, build a center. 
They give you strength. When you're doing hatha yoga and you get into a position that's tense, that has a certain amount of pain, what does the teacher tell you? Relax into it. He doesn't tell you, get up, stop. The minute it starts to feel any tension, relax into it. When you're getting a massage, all of a sudden, ah, they hit a spot. You know what you say? That's it right there. Because you know that you don't want that inside of you. And if they work with it, it's going to be painful, but you're going to feel better. And that's why you go there. So basically, it is the same thing inside yourself. I've now talked about these external experiences of tension or pain or discomfort. Inside, you have discomfort too. You know that. You do it exactly the same. You don't hit the masseuse. You don't get up from the table and run away. You don't leave the yoga class. You just little by little relax, little by little relax, little by little relax, so you're not participating in the tension. You do the exact same thing when you are cleansing inside. You just, it's not easy. You just relax. When you feel some tension or some jealousy or insecurity, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just left over from the garbage you stored in there. And you just relax and give it the room to release. You just keep giving it the room to release. When you are doing that, every moment of your life, about everything. Whoa. You would be shocked how many people write us. I started doing that, and I've been on the path for 50 years. I'm 65 years old, right? And everything's changing. I never understood that that's what it meant, right? I was always trying to get situations that that didn't happen, not that the situations are my friend because they cause it to happen and now I can use it to let go of myself and all of a sudden all this energy shifting and my whole life is changing. That That is your path. Your path is one of purification. It has to be. Why? Because you shoved all this garbage on top of your energy flow. What do you expect? You're going to skip it? Right? Let's go to six and seven chakras. Come on, guys. Let's meditate a lot. No. You have to work your way through yourself. So your willingness to let go is what it's all about. At first, you just do it with small things. Don't bother yourself with big things. I don't want you dealing with that. Just little things that you're bothering yourself about for no reason. Relax and release. Until you get into the habits, like practicing the piano or in a sport. You just get into the habit that I can do this. I can stay centered and let go of things. And you're going to find out that all of a sudden a whole burden gets taken off of you. Your whole life becomes much easier to live. Of course it does. You're not bothering yourself about everything. And then it's going to start. What? Stuff will come up by itself that's been in there for a long time. You may be minding your own business and just going about your business and all of a sudden this sadness comes over you and you start crying. You you must have gone crazy. What's going on? And then you tell me it's not working. No, it is working. That stuff needs to come up. You don't need to go down there and find each one of them and work them through. They will come up by themselves when you stop shoving stuff down there. And at first, it's not so much fun. And then when you start seeing the benefit of having that thing not in there, it goes to your heart, it goes to your mind, your whole body becomes healthier, and so on. This is is the chi, the shakti that everyone's talking about, right? You don't have to go find it. It's inside of you. The question is, are you willing to remove and release the blockages that are keeping you from feeling it? So as you do this, you are going to start to feel love. In fact, I better put a little warning sign. You better learn, like somebody have to learn to handle the liquor. You better learn to handle your love because you're going to feel a lot of love. All right. And what you're used to doing when you feel love is grabbing. Well, you can't grab everybody. You can't grab everything. And that's about the deepest thing I always want to talk to you about is the energy is either blocked, that means going down, held down. It manages to come up, and now your tendency is to express it, to go out. If you manage, if you can hold your shakti and handle this, if you're not renouncing, you're not suppressing, no, no suppressing and not renouncing. It's just, what would it be like if it came up higher? The power that can go out can go up. And if it's going out, you're bleeding it. Do you understand? Like, like a leak in the plumbing. If it's going out, it's not, it can't go further up. So it doesn't mean you don't do anything. It doesn't mean you're renunciated. No, don't do that. It means that you're in here and you've now managed to free a certain amount of energy so that now it's always coming up and it very easily goes out. You get inspired by, have fun, You're inspired by everything. Imagine if the boss said, all right, who wants to do that? Me! You just love doing everything because it allows you to express the energies inside of you. You're going to find out that the more energy you get, the more discipline you need to be with your energies. 
because they they are they're beautiful you know they're beautiful and and if they come out they won't go up and as you relax through them, you start relaxing through everything. And then I'm not going to go too deep. I never talk too deeply in this stuff. You're going to find out that it's just the fourth chakra. You are a being of light. You're a being of energy. Your energy is blocked. The more you let it go, the more it's not blocked. It's that simple. And of course you can have relationships. Of course you can be friends. Of course anything. But it's not where you're getting your energy. What did Christ say? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that leaveth the mouth of the Father. A yogi understands exactly what that means. You are not getting your energy flow from the outside. It's not bread alone. There's an energy inside that flows freely. It's spontaneous. It's self-effulgent. And if you're not blocking it, it feeds you. All right? And your whole life becomes beautiful. You're still like everybody else. You go to work, you do this, you do that, but not for the same reason. You go to work because it's fun. You know when you know you're getting there? When you go to work and at the end of the week, they actually pay you. You have no idea why they would be doing such a thing. This is so beautiful and so much fun. You get to express yourself and perfect yourself. And it's like every second of your life is, I want every second of your life to be high. You hear me? So you just keep letting go. And what happens is the energy starts to go up. If you're a really great being and very sincere, you honor and respect that energy. You thank it. You worship it, right? That is the the chi, the spirit inside of you. And you live your life for it. You literally devote your life to that energy flow. You eat in accordance to what lets it flow better. You sleep in accordance to it. You have your your, your relationships or, or disciplines or whatever it is all so that you'll know when that energy is flowing freely and more and more and more you're going to find out that if you just leave it alone she doesn't want to go out she wants to go up shakti wants to go up you don't have to do that i know we all do kundalini yoga and pranayamas and all that that's because you're blocked and you're trying to help the energy encourage it to come up if you will release those blockages she will go up by herself And then you're going to feel the tendencies to go out. You have to learn to deal with those. You have to learn to deal with the positive energies, just like you learn to deal with the negative ones. And at some point, you'll just sit in there and you'll let her do her work. You will let her do her work inside of you. And she will always go up. But you'll see that you're uncomfortable. You're even uncomfortable with high. If all of a sudden you felt so much love that you felt out of control, you'd pull yourself back in two seconds until you learn not to. Until you learn to say, I want to go there. And you just keep letting go. And ultimately, your entire path becomes one of letting go. You literally are living a life of purification. You're living a life of... Purification doesn't mean you never swear. Purification doesn't mean you always wear white. Purification doesn't mean your behavior patterns. Purification means I'm living a life of letting go of the garbage I've stored inside of me. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, I'm not putting any more in. What's the purpose of letting go of the old stuff? You're putting more in. You just literally... The topic tonight is love. You commit your life to say, yes, I do. I am a loveaholic. I love it. Now I've told you how to get it and keep it and have it forever. And it's irregardless of people, places, or things or anything around you. It's called unconditional love. And when it comes up through the fourth chakra, that's really nice, but it ain't got nothing to do with the higher centers. Then you're talking about really, really high stuff. You're a very, very high being. There's no words that can talk about it. But what a nice journey. Instead of out there begging for people to be the way you need them to be and struggling and feeling you have to fight with everything and everybody to make everything okay, you just become beautiful. So that's what it means to seek love. It has to do with the fact, are you going to continue blocking your energies inside or will you devote yourself to love, devote yourself to raising that energy up, letting it flow up by itself, by getting out of the way? Mayor Baba once said, love springs spontaneously from within. It is not dependent upon anything or anyone. It is whole within itself. That's that energy coming up. All right. Work on these things. Jai Gurdiv.